بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم This is a summary, a gist, and a translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Mawlana Qamru Zama Sahib Tamad Barakatuhum, which took place on Thursday, the 12th of Zulkada, 1442, corresponding with the English date, 24th of June, 2021. Hazrat Wala Tamad Barakatuhum quotes the ayat of the Quran in Majid: "Qad aflaha man tazakka wa dhakar asm Rabbihi fasalla, bal tuuthirun alhayat al-dunya wal-akhir tu khairu wa abqa. Inna hada la fi al-suhf al-ula, suhf Ibrahim wa Musa." Hazrat Wala Tamad Barakatuhum goes on to say that it was Mawlana Muhammad Isa Sab, or was it Mawlana Muhammad? Hassan Amratsari, they have put down very beautifully uh, from Hazrat Tanwi Rahimahullah Ta'ala one one razila, one one of the despicable uh, characteristics which one should, uh, those characteristics and qualities which one should read from their hearts. It is worth reading and we should go through that. Now I have in front of me the tafsir Amari Ful Quran Idrisi, Mona Idris Kandalwi was the Sati of our Hazrat, and uh, towards the end he would come and uh, present himself in the Majlis of Hazrat Mona, uh, Mona Shah Wasiullah Sab. You know, the Quran is the shortest path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We went over this particular aspect many times in the past that it is the Aqrab Tariq, the closest path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here the Qur'an and recitation of it bi fahmin aw bila fahmin with understanding or without understanding. Hazrat Wala also speaks about a person saying to Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib that uh, the Qur'an and the Hadith is sufficient and Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to answer yes if they make it sufficient, then it would be sufficient. Meaning today, what we have adopted is that we just have taken the Quran and left the Quran. We pay no attention to Al Quran. A very great personality, Monana Idris Kandalwi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. You know, this constant remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, abundant remembrance, unceasing. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wukufi qalbi. This is the objective of the shariat. This is the objective of the shariat. Now in this particular ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking and telling us about his path. Listen, you know people who set out and lay down the railway tracks and the paths of the railways and where, where actually it goes and through which areas it goes and how a person reaches from one place to another. Do they not know, are they not well acquainted, these engineers, the people who do the plans of the routes from one area to the another area, are they not acquainted with the path? Most definitely they are acquainted. So what can we say? Are you telling me that Allah Ta'ala has forgotten about his path? No ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows his path very well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling mankind about this path and how can they reach him. Qad aflaha man tazakka. Successful indeed is he who has purified. He has purified himself from kufr, shirk and spiritual diseases such as pride, jealousy, etc. Wa dhaka rasma rabbihi fasalla who takes the name of his Rabb, meaning he engages in dhikr and performs Salat. You know, in our Salat, the last dua that we read in Salat, it was brought over to us, narrated by Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an, Allahumma inni dhalamtu nafsi dhulman kathira, wa la yaghfiru dhunuba illa an, faghfir li maghfiratam min indik, warhamni innaka anta al-ghafuru rahim In Salat, the one who takes his Rabb, the name of his Rabb, engages in dhikr and performs Salat. In Salat, what do we actually do? We take Afdal Shaykh 
and we put it and place it down on Ardhalashe. We put the most honorable and noble part of our entire body, our forehead, and we put it on to the most mean of things, the most low of things, meaning onto the sand and onto the earth. Allahu Akbar. You know the Bani Israel, when Fir'aun came to them and said to them that, I am Allah, make sajda to me. What did these people, what did the Bani Israel say? They said, no ways, never ever. This void of ours only bows down in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and none else. We are the progeny and the children of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. They did not obey Fir'aun due to which he took drastic action against them and also because of his fear that he understood that there would be somebody from amongst the very Bani Israel that would overpower him, dethrone him. So in the name of all of that, he executed and killed hundreds and thousands of children from the Bani Israel. But وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ Allah Allah Ta'ala plans, they plan and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also plans. وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ And Allah Ta'ala is the best of all planners. So this makr and this plan of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was so unique that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala allowed the person that he was fearing the most the per that one person due to which he slaughtered hundreds and thousands. Allah Ta'ala made it such that that one person was nurtured in his very own palace. In his very own palace. And that child, Musa alayhi salatu was salam, was taken away from his mother. Allah Ta'ala consoled the mother. And Allah Ta'ala also said that I would return your son to you. The son, Musa alayhi salatu was salam, eventually was sent back to the mother and the mother breastfed Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Now these are the topics of uh, which are mentioned in the Quran. So, Qad aflaha man tazakka, successful indeed is he who has purified, who takes the name of his Rabb, engages in dhikr and performs salat. So this particular rule and this particular zabta and order has been designated for, for us. Yahi zabta khuda ki taraf se te kar diya gaya has been designated for us from the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the golden rule. What is the golden rule? That successful indeed is he who has purified. Purified himself from all zahiri batini hissi manawi from all external internal concrete or abstract impurities rather he has taken far and pushed away from himself all these type of impurities in such a way that no type of impurity is with him and no signs of it has remained with him no, uh, no, no signs of impurity, not in his akhlaq, not in his external, not in his internal. So pure and so clean, his heart becomes filled with i'tikad, with iman and faith, and with amal, with his actions. There's so much of taharat that he read it, it becomes a means of him to reach success. Okay, let's continue. He takes the name of his Rabb and he performs Salat. Meaning that he now engages in Ibadat and fulfills the Haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He passes the stations of Taqwa and Taharat. And he then reaches into the greatness of the high levels of A'mal and Akhlaq, where he recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, success 
is suspended on the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making ruju to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the foundation that success, we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need to have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's also based upon this that insan has fikr for the akhirat. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ وَأَبْقَى However, they, meaning most people, prefer the life of this world. وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ وَأَبْقَى Whereas the Akhirah is much better and much more lasting. In this path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the biggest obstacle and hurdle is that of love of this dunya and following base desires. And that's what we need to abstain from. However, O oh Insan, due to your negligence, you are not turning to the reality of this. Rather, you are giving preference. You prefer, they prefer the life of uh, this world in exchange of the life of the Akhirat. Whereas, the Akhirat is much more better and much more lasting and in the ni'mats of the akhirat there is eternity there is khulud and dawam in every ni'mat there of the akhirat there are such ni'mats that no eye has ever seen no ever no ear has ever heard of and the thought of which has not even passed the mind and heart of any person to chahiye to ye ta so this is actually what's supposed to take place that by means of your atikad and your amal you're supposed to establish this that you love the akhirat but you are not doing that O oh, insan you are not doing that O oh, insan now this here is for all for the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, for his wife Aisha radiallahu ta'ala an, and for the son-in-law as well, Ali radiallahu ta'ala an as well. You know, Hazrat Abdul Majid sahab on one occasion said to Hazrat Tanwi rahimahullah, Inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. And he says, the most meaning, the meaning of the ayat, the most honorable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who possesses the most taqwa. And that was actually the, the reality which he was putting forward in that particular conversation. We giving preference to the dunya. And Allah ta'ala is saying, Hubbud dunya ra'su kulli khati'ah That love for this dunya is the root of every sin and every evil. Now you tell me, I'm asking you, Hazrat Wala addressing the people, his audience there, tell me, is this not such an article that we should speak about over and over again? Make dua to Allah that because of the barakat of this mazmoon, an article mentioned in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala makes our maghfirat. Listen, those who don't want to listen and accept these type of talks, then when their eyes close, they will realize in reality what was what and what was the correct teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know when Hazrat Mawana Shah Wasiullah Sa passed away, Mawana Abrarul Haq came about and he said that, listen, whoever comes, make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't look at your gathering, don't look at how many people have come and sit, but you carry on. Hazrat Wala thereafter remarks and says, Alhamdulillah, all these personalities, I took them as my shuyukh and my mentors. On one occasion, some person say, said uh, about me, regarding me, that Maulana sat everywhere and served every sheikh. That's why the ti this title suits him the best, that he should be called Khadimul Mashaykh. The assistant and the Khadim of all the Mashaykh. Now this is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, 
we should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah this is your kalam the kalam of Allah and we are the servants of Allah therefore oh Allah you can give us munasabat compatibility acquaintance uh, affinity with this kalam of yours So we're speaking about the dunya and not giving preference to this dunya. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, when he sat on the throne and became the Khalifa at that time, uh, he says to his wife, when she came with this type of jewelry, 900,000, no luck, 900,000, very, very expensive jewelry. And he says to her, listen, this type of jewelry uh, in it, I mean, this you have brought from your father's time and this year could much have to do with the wealth of people, usurping the wealth of the people. Therefore, there's one of two things. Either you take this jewelry and hand it over and put it back into the Baytul Mal, or we separate ways. You go your way and I go my way. Allahu Akbar. And that's exactly what she done. And she chose, she understood that. And Umar bin Abdul Aziz said to her that I don't want to be answerable for that on the day of Qiyamah. Today we also see that a father prepares so much in giving his daughter when she's leaving her home. But did we ever think of giving our awlad, our zurriyat, our daughters, our sons, akhlaq? There's no greater gift that a father, a parent can ever give his children than that of good character. Read the kitab. I've written a kitab, Tarbiyatul Awlad, the upbringing of children, the Islami Nizam, an etiquette of upbringing children in Islam. Monana Sayyid Amin Sab, uh, Nasir Abadi, uh, when a person uh, who did not have a, a wear a beard, then he would he would he would turn his uh, face away from that person he would not like to look at that particular face anyway this great personality i want to tell you one incident about him on one occasion he was called to arbitrate and when he came to arbitrate in fact if those people that were even there he faced his back towards them they were non-muslims and they had so much of confidence looking at his piety and the way he lived his life. And of course, the love that Allah Ta'ala puts for his pious people in the hearts of others is unexplainable. So then they said that, okay, Hazrat, now what's the final answer now? You heard the side of two, the story of two, both the parties, etc. Who does the land belong to? Now look at the choice of words that Hazrat Mawana Sayyid Amin Sahib Nasir Abadi gives. He doesn't say to this person or to that person. He says, this land belongs to the Hindus. This land belongs to the Hindus. The case was wrapped up and these people took their land, but it brought such amount of happiness to these people. They were ghair. They were not Muslim. So much of happiness, so much of happiness. They turn around, they come back and they say, Hazrat, we're taking this very same land. We're giving it to you for the purpose of a masjid. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So we need to make islah of our nafs. Today there is no tawajjuh. We do not pay attention to this important thing. Important point. And Allah Ta'ala is saying, Inna hadha lafis suhufi al-ula suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa Undoubt, Undoubtedly this, everything mentioned above about the purification of the soul, the dhikr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala this nasihat that has been given, that do not give preference to the life of this world, rather to the akhirat, this advice that has been mentioned above is undoubtedly mentioned in the previous scriptures, in the ancient scrolls. Suhuf Ibrahim or Musa in the scriptures of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam and Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Manana Idrisa Kandalbi Rahimahullah goes on to say that Ye bulan paya nasihat or fala wa sa'adat karaz beshik wo he this high nasihat this great nasihat and the secret of success is this which has been mentioned in the previous scriptures the scriptures of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam and Musa alayhi salatu was salam who were ulul azm jalilul qadr 
prominent Anbiya alayhimu salatu was salam. So what doubt can be in this type of nasihat and its greatness that the previous people had it and they accepted it and they seen the benefit of it. It is written in the annals of history about the benefits of those people who practice on this type, this type of ta'limat. So, O oh, insan, lihada, e insano, tum ko chahiye ke insan ki fitri o tabai kamzoriyo se bacho. Stay away and protect yourself from these human weaknesses, this natural weakness in man to follow his nafs. Stay away from that and purify that nafs and soul of yours. Qad aflaha man tazakka, successful indeed is he who has purified. Hayate dunya ko pasan karne ka bajaye. Instead of loving and giving preference to the life of this world, fikre akhirat or khusule saadat ki taraf ruh karlo. Therefore, fikre akhirat, the concern of the akhirat, turn your attention to the concern of the akhirat and the attaining of everlasting success. Everlasting success. Now this is success. You know, Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, whenever he used to quote any mazmoon, now here Allah Ta'ala is speaking about all success lies in this, in the person who has adopted this ta'aleem, what type of ta'aleem, and what's the instruction here? That he purifies his soul. He would say that, Ya Allah, he would quote that this was one of his special mazmoons. This is what he was, used to say. Immediately he would quote a hadith after that, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was commanded by this, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had or reached the greatest heights of fanayat and tawazu, self, uh, selflessness, uh, annihilation of the self, humility, that he spread his hands out and he said, Oh Allah, you are saying success lies in this. I cannot accomplish this. I cannot do it on my own. So Allah, you help me. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would make the dua. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa maulaha. Oh Allah, grant my nafs its piety and purify it because you are the best that can purify the soul. Anta wali yuha wa maulaha. You are the guardian of this nafs. You are the owner of this nafs. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha wa zakkiha. Anta khayru man zakkaha. Anta wali yuha wa maulaha. O oh Allah, we are the individuals of this nafs and the soul. But you are the owner of the soul. O oh Allah, it is not difficult for you. O oh Allah, you purify our souls. You purify our souls. You assist us, O oh Allah. You help us, O oh Allah. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sameeul alim. Wa tub alayna innaka anta al-tawwabur rahim. Bi hurmati Sayyidin Nabiyyil Kareem. Sallallahu alayhi